Okay. So we are on the eastern side of the Sphinx, right in front of the Sphinx, exactly in front of it. There is this temple that is so <laughs> amazing and mysterious and uh, it's made of huge blocks that have been quarried from around the Sphinx to fashion the Sphinx. And this too, look at the size of the each one of those limestone blocks, you see? And for a reason or another, it's been refabrished, renovated with granite in a later period, it seems. So they have shaved the uh, erosion that is caused from wind and sand in order to fit the granite. Look at how, you see, come and see it here. So this is a definitely two-staged work. The temple, the valley temple to the south of uh, the Sphinx. Of, it's uh, uh, named after Khafra, the builder of the second pyramid. It lies right behind. Why? For some circumstantial uh, evidences that we will talk about. It's believed, look at how it's married. The granite is married to the huge blocks those were cut from that area that to, to in order to fashion the one piece of lion body human head of sphinx they cut out from around it so those are the stones that came from oh, there so they, we will see mm -hmm. we'll see yeah. the granite look at the size of the granite comes yeah. from aswan about 600 miles away and came to build this place. This is plain, no carving, no reliefs, but such mm. a powerful place and we're going to really see and learn mm. a few very good things. Let's go. Mm -hmm. See the size of one of oh, the, yeah. some of those blocks? The one here. Again, it's the original uh, limestone that built the temple. We see the, 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 the alabaster oh. ground. So alabaster. Alabaster ground, granite onto the limestone. And we see this pit that they covered. This was excavated in 1800 plus plus. Mm -hmm. Mariette, he discovered here a statue of Kafra and it's a wonder. It is a wonder. It's made of green diorite, olive color, and it's luminous. Oh. It was found upside down. Amazing statue that we are going to see in the Great Museum, in the Egyptian Museum. For this piece here, especially, and maybe because the temple is lying right under or in the same way of the ascending, when you ascend the causeway, you end up in that in Kafra, in Kafra, so they named the temple Kafra, and the Egyptologists uh, uh, found the resemblance of the face of Kafra to the Sphinx, so they called the Sphinx Kafra. We're going to discuss a few things now. Look at how so tight, mm -hmm. huh? It's yeah. so precise, the precision. Look. The amazing thing here, of course, again, I want to tell you that oh my God, you granite see. comes from Aswan, all the way by the Nile here, and <laughs> they had 
they built this in this way. Alabaster comes from the middle of Egypt. Beautiful, still, this is restoration, and this is alabaster. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Come and see this beautiful T-shaped hall. Very simple, mm. very plain, and very powerful. Can you feel I can it? Hear the I can hear that. I feel it here. Yeah. You know, yeah. look at the, the behind the original st stone. Then mm -hmm. it's been renovated, always refurbishing, is by granite or such stone. And most probably, Kafra, 2400 BC. He restored the temple that was already existing. This is, I'm giving you hints, but we will see, we'll do the whole talk in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. Now, those pillars represent the day or the night. And there, this was sealed. There was a ceiling in this place. Usually pillars or columns mm -hmm. are made in temples to carry a ceiling, to support the ceiling. Now, there are square cuts. Look, square cuts to allow the sun to come in during the day in certain hours through the different like overtures the solstices we pronounce and yeah. uh, every oh. day and reflected those rays of the sun they went on the alabaster shining then ah. reflected on the statues that fitted here there were oh. statues of Kafra. Wait one second. So it went hit the floor and then bounced back up. Oh, really? And then the statues will absorb the the, the rays during the day, and then uh, they glow. They are made of when you see in the museum. Uh -huh. It's olive, so it glows in the dark. Wow! Look at the uh, effect. Hmm. The effect of uh, light. Mm -hmm. of the powerful stone that oozes energy. You see, why do you think they did those huge blocks? They could have done little ones. A huge thing retains, mm -hmm. keeps the energy in. It doesn't really seep like a, a, a small cube of, of ice. It's not the same as the big piece of ice. <laughs> You know, <laughs> this will melt very fast, mm -hmm. rather than that, okay. right? Also, there are a few other factors uh, that were uh, uh, taking in, uh, you know, consideration here. Let me show you. Wow, oh, so the statues that were here were all kafra, you said? That were they were kafra, they were not all uh, 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 intact. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, somewhere not. We didn't find them all. We found a few. Uh, the, the most beautiful of all uh, was found there. Who knows who buried it? Burying is to save it from the hands of some people who could uh, 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 damage or misuse it. And it's believed that it may be even seeding the mm -hmm. earth of mm -hmm. the land, the ground of the temple Fertilized. with the holy mm -hmm. statue of the netter or the great uh, uh, pharaoh or uh, King Kafra mm -hmm. of the fourth dynasty. In order to do corners, they kind of shaved to do those angles. Shaving isn't easy. So it was like this and they kept shaving, shaving, shaving until they got to the angles and the separate ones have the same no. measurement no. of the angle, no. right? Why? The temple in ancient Egypt is called Per Neter, the house of the Neteru, the deity, the great, the god. The house of God is full of vibration and strong, you know, has really energy. The temple then has articulation like the rest, like the elbow. Mm. So the energy does not cut off and seep. It keeps running. Mm. 
Oh, yeah. It's like a living mm -hmm. uh, organism itself, mm -hmm. the pernitere, right? As well as we talked about the visual effect by the sun, blah, blah, mm -hmm. and the, the sound. Oh, I can sound. Hear. Because vibration. when you do corners like that, it's like the, the, the speakers. They uh -huh. never have a sharp uh, thing. It has uh -huh. rounded to keep the, wow. by uh -huh. the, the, the sound. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So can you just shut your eyes and uh -huh. imagine the place with the ceiling? So uh -huh. it's dark. Then the light comes uh -huh. in the right time. Alternatively, every window will let the rays come mm -hmm. during the day. Then the, the smoke of the, of the incense, the hymns of the priests, the hymns that were uh, mm. prayers, mm. Mm -hmm. reciting some rhythmic uh, prayers. So it is m music, it is visual. It is the energy. It's a container. It's a dense thing. Temples in Egypt were not a show off. And by the way, they were never built by a single order of a king. This had two stages very, you know, the, it seems to be the, the limestone, you know, mm -hmm. uh, one first, then refurbished by granite in Old Kingdom. But then all the temples that you will be visiting in Upper Egypt, they started from time immemorial. When the Shemsu Hor were said to be walking on earth, the followers of Horus, the first Neturu, the beginning of all beginnings. So these lands were sacred and believed to be the birth of a deity here. So it becomes Temple of Amun, Temple of Isis, Temple of Horus. It's where the litter has been first created. So it became the sacred ground, the birth of this litter. So temples are built one after one from the beginning. Then the litter ones will know. They keep the legacy up, 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 mm -hmm. up until the end. So Karnak, for instance, in, in, in Karnak, the great Karnak, took 2,000 years to build. 2,000 years, mm -hmm. and it is such a great work of art, engineering. I can tell you how much it is, Karnak. And each temple comprises and, and has the magic from which the nether prevails. Dandara, the lady of cycles of time, Hathor, Isis, the mother that is equal to Christian, Mary, mm -hmm. Mariam, you know, Osiris, even Set, Set, in our symbolist Egypt that we took from the great uh, John Anthony West, he, he, he uh, translates it to a beautiful and very respectful way, the Neturus altogether, and I really recommend reading Travers Key of Ancient Egypt of John because he explains the religion of Egypt in a way master n nothing more decent and human than more than that mm -hmm. breaks it to a wonderful understanding Set is the uncle of Horus Set killed Osiris the two brothers they were two brothers Horus was set to you know was it took the mission of revenging his father. But the revenge never killed the uncle. Never. There was kind of like, Seth had his position in the Parthenon of gods. He's respected and he has a, a, a goal. It's Seth who fixes spirit to, 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 to physical. Without it, th there won't be really. <laughs> Seth does that. Set does that. Mm -hmm. Set is the opposition. Can you believe living in a world with no opposition? Mm -hmm. Set is the night. Can you believe living in a, in a daylight forever? Mm -hmm. So there is very important 
a work and job and responsibility for Seth. As John said, when I open, when I get to start my laptop and it's all black, that's Seth. That's <laughs> evil. Doesn't open, you know? So he has an analogy on everything. So Set to one of my left hands. So, yeah. so I know. Yeah, so mm. there is no evil and good. There is a philosophy behind every letter and the whole religion and the whole script all together. Mm. But you have to really read and understand and some of them are possible and some of them are not broken. Nobody can can claim they nobody can claim they've known it all. Mm. I don't agree, I'm sorry. <laughs> huh? Nobody. Because really you're not giving a complete book from A to Z. Here, take it and read, and here is the history and all the mysteries. Sorry. We're trying to to, to think and figure and excavate and research and it you know, it's lots of studies and there are many paths, many, some are strictly academic, which is respectful in many ways. Some have symbolized the meaning and it gave it a spirit. It gave it another dimension that it touches your heart. It's kind of human. This is the path that I chose after learning from the great John Anthony West. It's not the strict Measurement, stone, date, and go. Eh? Fine, what? Then what? <laughs> What's behind it? Why? Why? It made me think. And why is a good uh, question? Everybody should question. I'm saying things you may not believe. It. So what? Search. Maybe it will hit your, uh, your consciousness and, and you take it. So we have a field and especially after John passed, bless him, he didn't pass, he, he, yeah. uh, he's here. So there is a lot of waves. Some are vicious, some are respectful, some are denying all the old and replacing with new. I have the whole tray. I'm reading, I'm taking as a person and many others. Mm, this makes logic, but not totally, I'll take this part. This, eh, eh, no, this card, <laughs> you know, so that's Egyptology now. Mm. Huh? And I personally chose to be of the symbolist mm. uh, path because it's the most that touches the heart and spirit, mm. you know, and you rela relate and, and you then think and, uh, and gives you big material to, <laughs> you know, cut and train and mm. you know it's fun it's beautiful mm. now let us see how they cut look at this uh, cutting yeah. this to rest on that look how many corners out of one single stone look how many sides and corners one two mm. side here another side here goes here here look how many oh. sides of mm -hmm. one block or this one. Oh, so one block I got you mm -hmm. you see also, there was a hinge. There are hinges up here for door. I, the Egyptians, and that's wonderful. They used the 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 pattern huggledy puggledy, you know, unequal, unequal. Look at them. That's I think more difficult to. To, to build with, like when it's little bricks that are same size, do, 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 mm -hmm. then how did they fit them together? Wow. And Huggledy mm -hmm. Puggledy mm -hmm. is to contain, mm -hmm. because that will really uh, um, uh, it will retain the, 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 if there is something that will um, earthquake. It, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. no, not just earthquake, that's good too. Mm -hmm. No, it's the it will buffle the energy, so it will keep it in. Now, 
Now, you see, the causeway, whether if it started here, I think it's more logical to start here with the boats that bring from the Nile to the canal where we saw in front of the Sphinx, then come through the temple. And here is the causeway. It goes ascending all the way to the nearby temple of, this, of the pyramid of Kafra, then Kafra. So here is the descending uh, 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 causeway. Now to the side, we're going to see mm. the most amazing struck wow. statue of mankind since the beginning to now. Oh, wow. And most studied, you know what? Take some very good shots mm -hmm. and then let's sit and talk. Mm -hmm. But I will explain a few things while you're shot shooting. In order to, you see, this ledge was all the way to there. So they have cut out the blocks from around. They, had, they have left enough rock to fashion a lion's body. So the stones that came from here were used here to build this great one and this one. So the temples and the Sphinx are of the same date. This is the most logical of the theories, but Dr. Elbaz from NASA, it's a wonderful scientist really. He believes that the, 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 the rock that made the sphinx, sphinx was fashioned as a yard dam with atmospheric, you know, winds oh. that went woo like this and created kind of a lump. So later people, that was like hundreds of thousands of years ago, you know, very old, exposed to another, a few other atmospheric features that we will discuss. And man came and fashioned and cut out the lion body out of that yard then. So, and he believes it like recently I have discussed with him. He is still insisting and he, that's his convenience uh, conviction and I respect very much Dr. Elbaz. But I think also it's so logical to take that or to, 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 to believe that the, the, the blocks that were cut from here, they really are the same and they used them, they were used to do this. So then they had enough rock to cut out a line. Why? We're going to discuss. Now this ledge, come here please, has many vertical, you see, grooves. Oh, mm -hmm. And some of them are really, really profound and deep. See? Look at this. I have pictures to show you. See? Actually, what was going on here of those fissures, they were exactly on the body of the Sphinx before they, they've hidden the evidence of, the, of, of, mm -hmm. of the body of the Sphinx being eroded like this. See how deep? We have photos to share with you. So what is here was obviously in here. I have a picture with John having his famous stick standing in this po position exactly and holding the stick like this to show how much of the body of the Sphinx has been gone, eroded, taken away from the erosions throughout the years. You see, but the little bricks here are modern. when was was it added to restore the Sphinx so if you notice you will have to then look at the, the, the thigh in the back 
big blocks of old kingdom style you remember we saw this mm -hmm. now the head is something else the whole sphinx thing we will discuss you please take very good pictures and let's meet here to have a nice talk okay. so uh, this is john anthony West. can we see the cover again and what cover? Oh. It's the it's the it's the guidebook that you can bring and take to Egypt. Yeah. The guidebook by all means. Mm -hmm. See the contents and you you know you will know. So I'm going to read a few from here, a few paragraphs from here, and a few from this one. How old is the Sphinx by Robert Shaw? Okay. Because Robert Shaw mm -hmm. and John Anthony West mm -hmm. did a great study. Mm -hmm. that we have to really give a very good uh, mm -hmm. uh, light on it. But here there is a great picture of John uh -huh. standing inside. It, it's more oh, than a feet uh, yeah. It's more than a feet deep. Wow. One of those fissures on the ledge. See? Mm -hmm. All right? All right. And, uh, and so in the beginning, I might before this tell you that uh, the lion's body and a human head or animal head is called sphinx by Greeks. The Greeks had their Greeks riddle, it's different woman mm. head, wings, lion body. In here, it's lion body, human or animal head also is a sphinx. This is the greatest statue of mankind, most famous, most beautiful, amazing statue, sculpture ever. Mm -hmm. And it has the mysteries of the world. Uh, it's been said that uh, it was made to uh, represent uh, 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 Horem, uh, Horem Achit, the, 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 the Horus of the Two Horizons. Mm. And, uh, yes, um, it's one piece, as I told you, mm -hmm. and actually it's been it's been uh, 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 in renovation since the very beginning of time. Like in the back here, there is Old Kingdom, there is New Kingdom. You can there is an indication to which age, uh, what stones were added. Now the Sphinx has been studied geolo geologically, and uh, and and the whole actually the whole plateau, it's limestone, and there are mem member members members of the stone there is member one which is the hardest part of the of the sphinx it's the head the member two and three it's they alternate between durable and weaker kind now this the geology is a very big factor for dating the sphinx why do we really need to to date the sphinx because actually if it lies way before the date that is given by Egyptologists now. The history of mankind has to be rewritten. That's the origin. Mm -hmm. We know the truth of the beginning of what and what happened and who and why, right? I'm going to tell you and show you a few paragraphs from those two books and a few references that I have uh, and links. Here wrote John, <clears throat> In the 19th century, as Egyptology developed, the Sphinx was generally assumed to be older than the pyramids. The pyramids are Khufu, Khafra, I mean, Kaura are of the fourth dynasty. Bet fourth dynasty between 2500 to 20, you know, 400 of that sort. It's fourth dynasty. So this must be older in the 19th century were generally assumed to be older than the pyramids for the very simple reason that it looks much older. There are no inscriptions on the Sphinx or any of the temples connected to it. However, the causeway that leads from the rear of the statue to the ruined temple directly in front of Kafra pyramid indicated a connection with the Pharaoh and further excavations provided, you know, having the uh, that, that you know statue the statue of Kafra right anyway there is also the stila between the paws of the sphinx this stila the granite stila it's called the dream stila 
was set there by Tutmosis IV, 1400 BC. Its long text tells how in a vision, the young man had a vision of the Sphinx who commanded him to clear the, the, the sands away from around his body. And then he was promised to be king of Egypt. The prince cleaned up the, the sand and he became king of Egypt, so he did this granite stela. On one of the lowest legible registers of this text, on a line that has subsequently flaked away, the name Kafra appeared in, hierogly in hieroglyphics, but the text surrounding the name was illegible, and the entire passage has now disappeared entirely. Um, there is a very important one here. But a far more dramatic inquiry into the age of the Sphinx was suggested by R. A. Schwaller de Lubitsch. Based upon, upon geological considerations, if Schwaller de Lubitsch observations could be confirmed, not only would the age and attribution of the Sphinx require revision, but the whole history of evolution of civilization would be called into question. To understand what it takes, what is what is at stake, a brief description will be necessary. The Greek and Roman writers of antiquity, ba basing their accounts on information received either first or second hand from Egyptian source, sources, claimed a far greater antiquity of, for the civilization of ancient Egypt than the currently established by Egyptologists. These Egyptian sources claim vast time spans, estimates ranging between 24,000 and 36,000 mm. years, during mm. which Egypt was civilized and ruled respectively by the Neturu themselves. Mm -hmm. The gods, the gods of nature. And, mm -hmm. yeah, those energies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the energies. And mm -hmm. by the Shemsu Hor, mm -hmm. the followers of Horus and mm -hmm. companions of or followers of Horus. Mm -hmm. But concrete evidence to support these claims has been scarce, scarce and quite circumstantial. And most academics have dismissed the claims. You know, at mm -hmm. least one of these ancient accounts may conceal a legitimate factual clue. Herodotus relates the, uh, th that according to his priest information in Egypt, this is very important. Mm -hmm. You, <laughs> astro astrologer, listen to this. <laughs> the sun had twice set where it now rose, and twice risen where it now set. Two ages. This statement is generally dismissed as nonsense. Mm. However, says Schwaller de Lubitsch, it may well be a reference to precision. Precision, yeah. Yes. Precession. Yes. Precessional cycles yeah. of the equinox. Mm -hmm. The wobble of the earth, it wobbles, mm -hmm. like Uval said. Mm -hmm. Axis that it it is responsible for the age of the zodiac, the mm -hmm. age of Pisces and Aquarius, mm -hmm. etc. The precession results in the sun rising against a different sign of the zodiac, roughly very. Uh, every 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And if, says Schwaller de Lubitsch, the priest's cryptic command refers to, the, to this phenomenon, mm -hmm. it would mean that the Egyptians counted their history back for at least cycle, a cycle and a half, or some 36,000 years. Mm -hmm. This is very bo uh, broad agreement with many other ancient accounts and mm -hmm. fragmentary chronological tablets, but until very recently, it could not be incorporated in legitimate scientific evidence, a situation that may no longer prevail. Schwaller de Lubitsch observed that, in this opinion, the dramatically severe erosion on the body of the Great Sphinx could not be the result of wind. This is very crucial now. Mm -hmm. um, My ears are but Whoa. was but was the result of water. Uh -huh. Hello? Do you see what, where we are? Uh -huh. We are in the desert. 
What water? In Egypt, the measurement of, of, the, of the rain that we get for a whole rainy season is one inch. Wow. One inch. It will not do right. this kind of so what, this, this kind of right. erosion. Put that close, can we again? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at two one ages. Minute. The wait, sun wait, rises wait. and sets. Let's yes, yes. So, do you want to implement on this? No, no, no. Keep okay. going. Keep going. I'm following. All right. Yeah. So, um, so Schwannerin observed uh, of water. The uh, body of the Great Sphinx could not be a result of wind mm -hmm. and sand, as uh, universally, uh, universally assumed, but was rather the result of water. Geologists agree that in, uh, in the not so distant past, Egypt was subjected to severe flooding of, of water, of uh, rain, precipitation, not Nile. Mm -hmm. Now Nile is something else and it did not affect here. The period usually held to coincide with the melting of the ice uh, from the last mm -hmm. ice age, circa 15,000, 10,000 BC. If it was possible to prove the Great Sphinx had been eroded by water and not by wind and sand, it would necessarily mean that it was covered before Egypt was, it was curved, curved, cut out, cut, cut, um, cut. cut mm -hmm. before Egypt was under water. Before it was cut, water came and did this right. effect. This is, uh, this in turn would mean that the greatest culture of, on earth existed at, uh, at the time when according to accepted uh, historical uh, theories, mm -hmm. theories, where was there was no civilization on earth and hum and humanity was in a um, stage of hunters and gatherers there was mm. a great civilization that is so dismissed from mm -hmm. the history of mankind because they just don't want to mm -hmm. end wind erosion cannot take place when the body of the sphinx is covered by sand and it was for mm. five thousand years it was you know mm -hmm. so another few words um, okay but the recent detailed study carried out by respectful honored dr mark laner field director for the american research center in egypt has disclosed three separate dates to the new kingdom hmm. An attribu attribution that may be open to question. The important disclosure is that the Sphinx had already been in, in, uh, eroded to its present condition when these earliest repairs were made. So Mark Lehner is saying what? Because Mark Lehner is opposing what we're suggesting of the earlier civilization. But in the beginning, he really pointed out the same direction as water erosion and earlier civilization, then there was a change. So here is what is said here. It seems this is necessary to conclude, that's Mark Lena, that the core body of the Sphinx was already in severe state of erosion when the earliest level of masonry, masonry was added. If we assume that a sand covering would act more to protect than to erode the statue, this leaves less than a millennium or perhaps half a millennium for the core to have eroded to the condition shown by the profile under the added masonry. So anyway, mm -hmm. and there is a geological called Gori, he did many, a lot of ge geology. Mm -hmm. Lehner's study shows that no substantial damage has been done to the Sphinx since the original weathering took place meaning that the Nile never mm. affected the Sphinx as assumed by others. So, yeah, <laughs> this is ja. <laughs> and mm. great talk actually about for, for Schwaller, but uh, sorry, for about Shaw. Mm -hmm. There is That's a very Shaw. important okay. Dr. Robert Shaw mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of Boston University mm -hmm. because the beginning was what? John read the big book of Schwaller de Lubitsch, who was a genius and he was a chemist and, a, you know, symbolist and mm -hmm. 
uh, esoteric and s mm. scientists and mathematicians and mm. amazing men. And he really, he, he just like locked himself in for I think two years or something and learned French and <laughs> translated the whole book. It was very complicated. John must be very smart to do to do the oh, it's very hard. John yes, John did it. Uh -huh. So when he was reading this, he noticed a line that intrigued him to come and do the study. The line that Schwaller says that the Sphinx erosion is not due sand to uh, wind and sand; it's due to water. That caught his attention. Mm. So he started the mission of seeing what's going on. The history is not written right. Mm -hmm. How could it be? So uh, he did lots of study and eventually he met Dr. Robert Schott and they, from 1990 or 90, you know, around, mm -hmm. and they did a whole, you know, mm. you know, lots of work for the study and, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So here, I want to read one very special thing of, of Dr. Schott because I will tell you why. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, Dr. Schock says that there are four major geological field evidence bearing on the age of the Great Sphinx is summarized in this section. He divided them into four points. One, weathering patterns two-stage construction of the Sphinx and Valley Temple, ancient repair campaigns to the body of the Sphinx, and seismic, seismic surveys seismic, on, the, yeah. mm -hmm. on the Sphinx area. Um, he says the, the length and the height, this is no, no nothing. Uh, most of the talk is what we mostly said here, what caused the... Um, the erosion, the water, the precipitation, and all. But there is here something, and I have respect to Dr. Shaw very much, and normally, he's a wonderful person, and wife, Katie, and lovely people, they're friends with John and family. I didn't notice this long ago. He says something, maybe, I'm glad he said maybe. <laughs> Who, Very, Shaxer, yes, maybe? Uh -huh. yes, maybe it's assumed that the back of the Sphinx, maybe I'm, I mistook it, but uh -huh. there is an assumption and carried on by other later people, I'm going to mention them, uh -huh. that the back of the Sphinx somehow was carved, that was carved by Kafra or uh -huh. whatever. Uh -huh. I can't believe this is uh, right. Why? The Egyptians do not do, not do parts. Mm. Do not. You go through all Egypt. You don't, do, you don't see a statue that is part. Mm. Romans sometimes did Venus with no head. Mm -hmm. Or Zeus, you know, or the hand, beautiful feet, mm. right? The Egyptians... Ha, their belief is very strong and and and, and their their faith they have faith and principles in their belief they really don't do a part of thing the sculpture must be total the egyptians believed those those who traveled outside egypt in the ancient days so in mission in in trade in military in literature we have them say Bring me, if I die, bring me back to Egypt. I have to be buried in the soil of Egypt. <laughs> and they so very are alert and caring that any, every piece of their body, limb, finger is complete. No finger not gone because if they believe they are coming back to life, they don't want to come back, you know, impudent. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is a belief that they have to be full. That's why they even invented the wooden replacement when someone, you know, loses a foot or finger, mm. they have to be intact, contained. Mm. This idea will submit to their art, their belief, and they wouldn't do a sphinx mm -hmm. half done, half cooked. 
<laughs> right? So, right, right. It, we, we, the maybe was good because no, it is not, cannot be half. And some doctors and people, now there is a lot of controversy coming on these things. Many people say it's not water erosion. Many people say, yes, it's Kafra. I mean, there is a lot of talk. Mm -hmm. One very good thing is, I want to tell you, this, this place was kind of savanna after the ice melting. So, okay. Mm -hmm. the, you know, when the ice melted, mm -hmm. the water, the precipitation of much flood of water came. Look at how it's descending. Take a take a, push, a, a, a picture from there. See, it's higher there, mm -hmm. and it's running gradual lower here. You see, so the water yes. came straight mm -hmm. from top to bottom, and the the collection of floods mm -hmm. would come through. And actually, you see, do you see the iron on the right? Mm -hmm. That right, not the top one. There is some kind of iron under it. There is a hole. This hole collected the water coming as flood, gushing and washing in the ledge and the body of the Sphinx beside the precipitation. All right, so this place then became green, savanna, and then there, it became arid, started to become desert. This is all those are the changes that happened that caused a lot of effect here. The, also, another thing, the head of the Sphinx has been believed to be many things, many things. It could be many things. Dr. Uh, Robert Chak and Dr. Manu Saif Zada, they, uh, Dr. Manu reads hieroglyphics and he translated the text in Unas Pyramid. And with, uh, with evidence, he found in the Egyptian Museum to a very interesting, very interesting study. He did a great book about, it's called Under the Two Books, saying that he proved, he proved that the, the head of the Sphinx originally was goddess Mehit, Menhit. Here it is. She's a, she's a lioness, mm -hmm. but not Sekhmet. Mm -hmm. And Mehit, was ancient Egyptian goddess in early dynastic period. She was depicted as a um, reclining lioness with three bent poles projecting from her back. Her, uh, you know. Three uh, bent poles? Yeah. Dynastic ceiling of ivory artef artifacts. She was there mm -hmm. usually together with the representation of an upper Egyptian shrine. Mm -hmm. Her main places of worship were Heraconopolis Heru, and Thinis, which is in Abydos. Now, Mahit was an uh, ancient Egyptian goddess in early dynastic period, was depicted as the, 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 the lioness, huh? and appeared in numerous early dynastic ceilings and ivory artifacts, usually together with representation on, uh, on of Upper Egypt shrine. Her main pal uh, places of worship is uh, Thenis, Mehid, Concert of Anhur. Mm. Wait, Concert of Anhur or Anoris. God who was worshiped in Thenis. Various texts allude to the myth which An Anhur tracks down Mehid in Nubian and Nubia brings her to Egypt as wife. Anyway, who's Anhur? These are very archaic. Actually, they are not so common. I mean, Mehit, maybe we heard of her. Of her. Anhur? So when, when Dr. Manu suggested that this is Mehit, fine. Okay. But me, I am, personally. I said, so why is Mehit? is due east exactly looking at leo rising you know leo rising or mm -hmm. leo age was mm -hmm. one three thousand six hundred right mm -hmm. years and one is ten or twelve uh, thousand years which is very much uh, mentioned here mm -hmm. in the, before mm -hmm. so anyway what uh, we always thought it was a lion looking at his image in mm -hmm. 
in, in, in that, uh, you know, direction. But why, if it was Mahid, is looking at a lion? Mm -hmm. So when I looked a little bit more, I found that Anoris, her husband, her consort, is represented as a lion. Oh. And that was exactly where he would appear into this very ancient time. So he's represented as a lion. So she's looking, she's looking at, at her concert. concert yeah. in, and uh. maybe, I am not in astronomy very much, mm -hmm. could that be the origin of what Leo became later? Leo mm -hmm. is what, Greek? Is Leo Greek the, the, style? The constellation, yeah. I mean, they didn't yeah. say Leo so, in, uh, and it's in, known, it's known mm -hmm. that the Greek uh, constellation mm -hmm. was based and started by yeah. the very Egyptian, beginning yeah. and the Egyptian uh -huh. uh, one. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. this led to that. Uh -huh. So could Leo have been Anhor? That made more sense that yeah. most probably then it's a Mihid yeah. because of the relation of Anhor. I hope I'm not wrong, but that's <laughs> what I feel. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the Sphinx had a cobra on the forehead the royal insignias, mm -hmm. the head cloth, and you can still see the color, and a beard, a beard, oh. and the beard is mostly in the British Museum and some in the Egyptian Museum, and because these are Egyptian royal symbols, and the beard is gone, the cobra is gone, but there is something else that we have to talk about here. It's the head. Before being a guide, I'm an Egyptian, grew in Egypt, and used to come to the Sphinx sometimes with my family. And when I started working as guide, academia, typical academic, I graduated from an academic university as Egyptology, in Egyptology. I always wondered how could this face, look at that protuned jaw, mm -hmm. the jaw here. There's something else here. Where, 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 where? Um, here, the jaw. Mm, I sent, I sent you that picture. Ike, oh. Ike. <laughs> here, look at this. Can you want to bring here, closer? Yeah. Look, here is a profile. Hang on. You see this? Now, okay. women. I think women are very intuitive. Okay. Yeah. And go. artistic. Maybe, of course some men too but without oh, yeah, without yeah. having the symbolist egypt without studying and going through much it i never bought the fact that this face is kafra kafra face when we see it's everywhere you can see mm -hmm. and it's in the museum totally different this has a protein jaw mm -hmm. like this cheeks and eyes and it's not the same uh, uh, Lehner and the Egyptologists are so inclined that this is Kafra. So Lehner, I think a few, many years ago, he put uh, the data in a computer of a Kafra. The result came Kafra. <laughs> Voila! Then John West, he wanted to put the, uh, the, 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 the information of Elvis Presley and it would come Elvis Presley, but the Elvis, Elvis uh, Foundation did not approve it, so he didn't do it. So he, he had the, the, the Placido Domingo, they did the, the facial uh, so anything, well, anything. and it proved not. Whether from pro, pro, uh, uh, profile or the from the face isn't Kafra. And still some people are Insisting, I just had to bring this mm. also mm -hmm. up. Anyway, it's not Kafra, and you cannot really restore in Kafra and Kefrin a uh, period with this stone huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. coated on the core. You have to have many, many years of erosion. Look at, you know how much of erosion yeah. is, is here? This is like the length of a whole arm. It, it inside, was in, like when you from stick outside, arm like if you put your arm, arm here, in. Yeah, you right. see from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Look at that additional uh -huh. part. Uh -huh. This much. Wow. So how could be? How could this big strong stone be uh, 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 
you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Scratched like this yeah, and yeah, lost down, this down. much, lost yeah. this much mm -hmm. in the same period when you build it. Yeah. You know, so. Okay, that's what they're claiming? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. You know, you can. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of evidence around. And, uh, Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, so, I think I've heard that there's been some dispute about the material, and you might have said this already, forgive me for missing it. The material of the head being different from the material Yes, it is. Of the there are three members. And I'm wondering if it could have been, because you say that everything is done as a complete whole. Yeah. I'm wondering if... Is this was added? That it was added later, that it was destroyed and then put on. Like it was made as a whole. And with all that erosion. Well, that to happened, me, as a person, me personally, and it doesn't count uh, scientifically, it looks like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if there is a reference to this as an ad or if it was the original. Because when, or one piece, because when they talk about it, they say it's made of three members, a strata. You know, yeah. member one is the head, which is the heaviest, the strongest, most durable. And two members below, one is softer, which is the middle, and the hardest one is the bottom one. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Ah, the Sphinx is be believed to be Horem Akit, or the Horus of the Horizons, the two horizons. Mm -hmm. This one is looking east, and there is another, could be, another one facing the opposite side that when we walk, I hope to try to show it to you. Mm -hmm. So here is the Akhid. There is a wonderful representation of what is called Akhid. Hey, one last one here. Ha, here, look. Ha, where? Good picture, actually. Um, of my friend from, well, how can I open this? Ha, well. Whenever you need it to work, it does work, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe here, like this. Or yeah. You know, try. Let me see. Okay. Um, it's two lions back to back. Oh, one I've looking seen this to the east, yeah. one looking to the west. Mm -hmm. They are the two, the, the two horizons. Shanuda. Oh. That's a friend of mine. Oh, 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 oh okay. He, he oh, the and the, the, that's the lotus. Yes, one oh. is sniffing the lotus. That's, that's the, the west. tomorrow horizon. And one is the past. Let me tell you. So the lotus is what? The tomorrow the, or the? The tomorrow. That's the, 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 the That's the west. Yeah. Well, no. The, listen here. I will show you, uh, my friend. I will show you. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me see this. It's called the acre. Is that the blue lotus or the serenity? I don't know if it's blue or what, uh -huh. or lily or. Uh -huh. I hope it is blue and they had a good time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why not? That's, Why that's not? What I was asking. They should have a good time. I think they should just like, know their know their herbs the, very well and Yeah. Blue yeah. lotus is okay. the former. So the it is the it's the guardian of the two horizons, the eastern and the western. And it they they are represent the acre. And you see them in tombs and it's very significant the two lines of east and west. Um each one is uh, the, the the yesterday is called Esif. And the, uh, the right, the left one is Dao. In the bit, in the middle, there is the solar disk, mm -hmm. and it's the Achit, the horizon. That's the symbol. Uh, uh, okay, the Achit, yeah. the Achit mm -hmm. is the limit, the the, the, the border line mm -hmm. of the world of spirit and the material world, the two worlds. Mm, the see? veil, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from spirit time. And that, in the West, when everyone dies, and the king, and the, and the son also gets to be buried and die, mm -hmm. and the physical world, uh, and the appearance, and the new life that comes from the East, which is represented in the sun. So the man, man have, has a new life, has a new life like the, the, like the sun. Um, the Dao, that uh, represents tomorrow sniffing this lotus let's call it blue one mm -hmm. so what <laughs> mm -hmm. blue lotus it's the symbol of uh, pu purity purity and uh, uh, and it's the symbol of the hope and the coming back from 
the stillness to back back to life so it's like the, the, the Egyptian is presenting a prayer saying be optimistic tomorrow is better than today mm -hmm. we hope mm -hmm. that it is better than today this is from the papyri of Annie, Annie papyri in the British Museum in the moment. So more or less that's to be said there must be also a few things to mm -hmm. be said. Um, there is a temple made of mud brick by Amenhotep II mm -hmm. uh, of the New Kingdom. Uh, I don't know if you noticed the tail of the Sphinx. Yeah we took the picture. horizontal uh, uh, sorry, the vertical and horizontal fissures in the back. Uh, one can spend a whole day here <laughs> and won't, won't have enough. Oh, look. Yeah. Wow, awesome. buses. All right, I'm gonna. Okay, bye. <laughs>